Insider Nation, welcome back to another episode of Buzzer Beater on the campus of Brigham Young University, Hawaii. Like always, Mick Miller, Jake McCleary, and it seems to be a repetition on this show. We start the show with an apology, but this time I'm not apologizing. Jake, take it away. Uh, we'd like to make a public apology in behalf of the Sports Information Department. As a lot of you may know, the Secretary Janice Stratton retired or found another better job a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago and yesterday a package came in for her with flowers a bouquet of flowers and a thing of chocolate but Once again I want to say I was not there I was not present I did not participate so this package came in for Jana but we thought she was gone and so we thought she wouldn't mind if we ate some of her chocolate but turns out there is a student named Jana Stratton as well and we would like to apologize to Jana Stratton here at BYU Hawaii but now on to women's Jenna, soccer. I apologize for Jake. Again, I was not a part okay. of this. So just, take it away. It wasn't take it just away. me. Okay, we're into women's soccer. Women's soccer is still on a road trip. And um, Mick, how are they? How are they doing so far? Well, they went one and two in their road trip. Three games in California. It was three games in which head coach Dan Dumar said that the Seasiders really needed to focus and come out with a few victories. Unfortunately, they were only able to get one victory. That came against Academy of Art, in which the Seasiders won 2-0. to zero. Now, the biggest difference in that game, as shots go, BYU-Hawaii had 22, Notre Dame had 6. The offensive firepower was definitely evident in that game, but when we played Notre dame Dina Moore, it was a little bit different. BYU-Hawaii, they gave up a goal in the 10th minute, and then a minute later, Sidney Eddy was able to respond, getting a goal in the 11th minute. But again, it, when it came down to the end, Notre Dame did no more, scored another goal, and Seasiders went down 2-1. to one. As shots go, BYU-Hawaii had 6, Notre Dame had 16. So yeah. complete reversal of that first game. And then against Fresno Pacific, Seasiders went down 4-0. to zero. Again, <clears throat> BYU-Hawaii 11 shots, Fresno Pacific 20. Main takeaway, offense needs to play a lot better. Mm, yes, but last week we were able to sit down with Sidney Eddy, and we'll take that, we'll go straight to our Seasider Spotlight. All right, guys, welcome back to the Seasider Spotlight. I'm Mick Miller, joined with Sydney Eddie. Sydney, thanks for Hi. sitting down and talking with Thank us today. Thank you for having me. I've got 10 questions. Okay. Now, these are very thought out, very hard hitting questions. Are you ready for today? Uh, I hope so. What is a must watch on Netflix for you? Okay, this varies depending on the month and my level of loneliness. Okay. But right now, it is Friday. But that's a good one. How I many mean, seasons are on Netflix right now? Can you like binge watch all of them? Yeah, so I binge watched season one in about three days. <clears throat> oh, wow. Not fast. So, and during midterm time. Oh, that's a perfect say. time. All right. What is your go to dance move? I'm not a very good dancer, but I've been told that I'm the one who's always just like, you know. Have you seen Hitch? <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't watch movies, people always make fun of me for that. Really? Well, there's just, that's kind of like a move. It's like you just create your but own thing. But it's like, thing. you know, you're just kind of with it, you know? Like the beat's controlling you. Exactly, like, yeah. exactly. All right, next question. <clears throat> very important question to me. Mm -hmm. Very dear to my heart. How you answer will determine how this friendship is going to, you know, go forward this or just completely here. stop. Yeah, this yeah. one right here. Harry Potter or Star Wars? Harry Potter. Good answer, good answer. All right. Who is your celebrity crush? Um, my celebrity crush? That, what's your name? Jake? But he's not a celebrity. Hello, like, Hoss, no Seasider fans. Welcome to oh, okay. today's Seasider Spotlight. No, like celebrity, time, celebrity like crush. Josh Lucas. Wow. Josh Lucas. Is that his name? I have no idea if that's his name, but... He's in Sweet Home Alabama. Really Matthew McConaughey. Okay, there we go. There we go. I, there I we have go. to admit, That's the I, I yes. even have a little yes. bit of a man crush. You should. McConaughey. Everyone should. All right. Jake. I'm flattered. I'm I sorry. am flattered. I am sorry to tell you, you are not a celebrity. On this campus, yes, I am. Oh, he's kind of a big deal. Okay, talk to us about men's soccer. They just got back from their road trip, three games on the road. Yep. What'd you see? So our men's soccer on this road trip, overall they're three, two, and one, and it's mm -hmm. the exact opposite from what we're seeing on the girls' team. The girls' soccer team in seven games have scored six goals. The men's soccer team has scored 18 goals in six games. Wow. So we're seeing a big difference in scoring from the men's and women's soccer team. In the first game against Academy of Art, we won 5-0. It was a scoring onslaught. Peter, Mason, Braden, Kyle, and Jake all scored. It was just an offensive explosion against Notre Dame. We lost three to two. 
BYU Hawaii had that 2-1 to one lead in the 84th minute mark. However, Notre Dame scored those two goals near the end. In a end span of, of four minutes. Like, the, BYU yeah. Hawaii was leading going into the 84th minute of that game. Yeah. They scored a goal. Now, I talked to a whole bunch of players early on this morning, and they were kind of explaining what happened in that game. Notre Dame scored two goals in four minutes. And it was kind of the same thing that we saw against Simon Fraser. Remember that yeah. game where BYU Hawaii ties it up? And then with 30 seconds left, Simon Frazier scores a goal right before the end of regulation. That's kind of what I was getting from the players. Just small mistakes, but then they bounce back and play Fresno Pacific, who won the Pac West Conference Championship in 2015. And they were actually chosen to win it this year. Many people thought that they were just going to go back to back. BYU Hawaii wins 6 1. And Braden Bailey scored how many goals? Four. That was probably one of the most impressive performances at BYU-Hawaii because Jake had a hat trick last year, but Braden scored four goals. Yeah, Braden's a freshman from Lone Peak High School, and I saw today in his senior year at Lone Peak, he scored five goals the entire season. And so he has four goals in one game. Well, hopefully we see more of that throughout the rest of the season. Main takeaway for me, 13 goals in three games. Offense, not a problem. It's just those small defensive mistakes that BYU-Hawaii is going to have to work on. Okay, highlighted player, none other than Braden Bailey. Who else are we going to talk about? He actually was named on Tuesday, was announced in the PacWest conference that Braden Bailey was the PacWest player of the week. And he was very deserving. Five goals on six shots. He only took six shots in that week in which he scored five goals. He only missed one That's of them. That's not bad. He should have had another goal, but they put a different player in for the PK. But again, another congratulations out to Braden Bailey. Five goals on six shots. He's leading the Seasiders. He's the second leading scorer for BYU Hawaii. And BYU Hawaii wants to have a successful year. Go to none other than Braden Bailey. Also, just a little bit of breaking news before we take our first break. Pierre Henrio, member of our men's soccer team, underwent surgery. He's going to be out for three months. So we hope a very good comeback for Pierre. We'll take a break, but when we come back, Jake sat down with Lillian Bradley. The first two semesters, I just loved it. It was the best like experience I've ever had. Um, learning and just the friend group here and the jobs that I've been able to have here have been great. It's been really awesome here. You just meet um, a lot of friendly people here. And I just love how, you know, we all have the same standards and we're all, you know, here to to grow together. Your campus is like down the street from the temple and being in the same community as the temple is such a blessing. Um, you feel the spirit everywhere you go, especially on campus. You're right next to the beach. Everything is in walking distance. The school is really small, and it's nice to see everyone every day and be able to like know people and say hi to everyone on campus. BYU has definitely given me a lot of experiences and opportunities to, to change my dreams and to make them more realistic and to be able to dream bigger. The atmosphere here, you can definitely feel uh, a different spirit here in Laie, and especially on campus, which I really love. Welcome back to Buzzer Beater. Unfortunately, we're not able to play the Seasider Spotlight. It was something that Jake did. Jake, you know, <laughs> just interviewing these players, it's just, it's, it's a whole right. nother thing. But, yeah. 
instead of listening to you and Lillian talk, how about we have, we've had a little debate going on for the last few weeks. Now, yeah. Jake is a firm believer in the Golden State Warriors. Not a fan. Not a fan. A believer. But he's Just a believer. That clear. Okay. I've got a lot of family who were born in Cleveland, and actually my best friend is from Cleveland. He's going to make fun of me for doing this because I'm going to back up the Cleveland Cavaliers, something that I never <laughs> thought I did. But, okay, yeah. let me hear your argument for Golden State Warriors winning the okay, NBA okay. Finals this year. As much as I disagree with it, they have Kevin freaking Durant to go along with the team that barely lost in the Finals last year. Kevin Durant adding on to Steph Curry, those two combined... How are you supposed to stop that? Who's going to stop that? I don't see LeBron and Kyrie being able to stop Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. Okay. Did you watch the finals? Yeah, I did. Did you see what Kyrie Irving did to Steph Curry? On that one play at the end of the, the game? The whole series. On that one play at the end of the game, game seven. Yeah, it was a good shot. Kyrie dominated Steph Curry the whole entire series. Now, Kevin Durant's okay. kryptonite for his whole entire career has been who? Who beat him back in 2012 in the NBA Finals? LeBron. Who has he not been able to beat his whole entire career? LeBron okay. James. Here's another thing. Okay, you have Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, Steph Curry. Okay, there's good for you. You five, name the players. On five the team. good players. You know what the problem is? What? There's only one basketball. There's only one. So, with five, who's five take, of who's, the best players in the league combined, they know how to play as a team. They've been playing as a team their whole career. Okay, who did? Golden, they don't have Golden State. Cavaliers game. don't have five stars on their team like the Warriors do. No, the they Warriors, just have, they they just might have, have the best th player in the world. That's who they have. Wow, you're admitting LeBron's the best player Shut in the world. Up. You made me say it, but <laughs> yes, he is the best player <laughs> in the world. Kyrie Irving is only 24 years old. He owns Steph Curry. If, okay. now I think this is going to happen anyways, but if Cleveland meets Golden State, I've got Cleveland winning the championship. Why? Because LeBron James is the best player on the planet, and... Wow, Golden State twice. went 73-9 and nine last year, and they completely depleted their roster. They have no bigs. They have Zaza Pachulia. No they don't need bigs. They have Kevin Durant. Ke Kevin I've been Durant, a Kevin Durant fan his whole Kevin career, Durant and we'll six, see that in the finals. Kevin Durant My is prediction, 11. they win in six games. Warriors beat the Cavs in six games in the finals. I got Cavs in seven. Kevin Durant, 6'11", oh, 120 pounds. All right, <laughs> let's move on to women's volleyball. Okay, one of the hardest things I think in sports broadcasting is when one of your teams is struggling yeah. and BYU Hawaii, it's, they've had a really rough year so far. They're two and 10, seven game losing streak. They're still on the road. Um, observations, thoughts, impressions, what's going on with BYU Hawaii this year? Well, one of the good things that can happen is things can only get better. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. No, <laughs> it's not the best start they've ever had, actually the worst, but we don't, I probably shouldn't have said that. Worst start in school history. They're on a seven game losing streak, two and 10 overall. Um, you know, I, I haven't been able to talk to any of the players. They're still on that road trip. They have a game tonight. So I haven't been able to talk to any of the players to know exactly what's going on. But have you heard anything about what's going on with the, with the team? It just seems like there is not, I would say chemistry issue. It's just there's so many young players. They're all inexperienced. They're all trying yeah. to come together. And again, talking to some of the players last year, I heard recruiting was being an issue, especially with it being announced that this was going to be the last year of athletics. So again, we hope the Seasiders yeah. their best, especially tonight. And then when they come home, they have to play well at home. Okay. Yeah. Last week in cross country, when we talked cross country, I told, I, I admitted that I wasn't the most knowledgeable, but I have some notes today. We touched up on it. They're not games. They're, they're not, not games. Players. They're races. They're not players. They're runners. An event. And Max Monker yeah. just won his fourth straight race. And yes, BYU Hawaii got their first team win of the season. What happened with the women's team? The women's team, Jess Horrocks, she took first yet again. Her and Max have seemed to dominate. However, the team, unlike the men's team, the women's team, were not able to take first. They've yet to take first this year. But they, they did get second. They did get second, which is the last two meets or events, races. Whatever they, they're called, whether they, you know, they just can start running. But yeah, BYU Hawaii doing very well this, this year. BYU Hawaii women's um, cross country running well. Yeah. Max Monker has been completely dominant. Now, Jake, I know last year you weren't here. You were, in, you were serving your mission in the Philippines, but... It was a historic year for especially these two teams on the TV screen behind us. Our tennis team, now, women's tennis has been the most dominated program at BYU Hawaii since the beginning of athletics here at this school. Last year, Dallas Zhang was named the Female Athlete of the Year in the PacWest Conference. We placed second in the nation, and head coach Dave Porter no longer is considered 
one of the top coaches in college tennis. He is yeah. the top coach in, in tennis, period. He shattered the record. He has over 1,300 wins as a coach. Our golf team, first ever golfer of the year in Brent Grant. Bob Owen was the first ever coach of the year. And BYU Hawaii went to their first ever NCAA appearance in the tournament, and they finished 12th. So we are still a few months away from our spring sports, but again, we want to give another Do shout out to our tennis and our golf teams of very historic no, year last year. Hopefully tennis can repeat what they did last year. So yeah, tennis, is, and they got a lot of their players coming back. Yeah, so, okay, last week we talked men's basketball. This week we'll talk women's basketball. Hopefully That's Coach Stanger is talking to it, is watching because he kind of called me out on it last week. All right, 2015, they went 11 and 14. Yeah. They had a talented team. Um, one of the things that I think plagued them were the road trips, and that seems to plague a lot of our teams when they play on the road. So far this season, they brought in, they have two twins from Denmark that yep. just transferred here. They are very talented players. I'm hearing that they've been doing great in training camp, but there's not a lot of players on this team. There might be nine. Oh, yeah, but how are we have Chris, have your Kristen Baldwin. She's a transfer, a junior from Arizona. She's one of the big... From what we've seen and from what I heard, she's a post player. She's exactly what this team needs to get going. Mm -hmm. The whole team, and me and us included, we're expecting big things from Kristen Baldwin and the twins that you mentioned from Denmark. One thing to keep an eye out for is last year, 84% of their offense is no longer here. Yep. I mean, Celeste Claw was the starting point guard. And she scored most of the points for our team. She also assisted on a lot of points. Valerie Nawahine yeah. was one of our leading scorers. Jashan Sweet. All these players graduated. So to replace 84% of your offense, it's definitely going to be interesting. And I'm interested to see how this season ends up. Uh, very excited for the Seasiders. Yeah. But we'll take another break. When we come back, Jake and I are going to debate week five of college football. Hospitalities in short supply and businesses hunger for college graduates who are considered genuine gold. One university seeks to change the world for the better. Join our students as they discover culture, business management, and the Aloha spirit. Come gain real world experience by working side by side with seasoned professionals and land your dream internship. Brigham Young University Hawaii's Hospitality and Tourism Management Program. 70 plus countries, 15 students per class, nine semesters. Make one epic adventure. HTM wants you. Careers are available. If you want a wonderful life and a great paycheck and a lot of fun, you should choose Hospitality Tourism Management. Hello. Five of college football is upon us. Jake, before we start getting into our debates, where is this producer? I swear to the, every single time. All right, okay. before we get I mean, into the games in week five of college football, we are just a few weeks away from college football releasing their rankings for the college football playoffs. Yep. Which I love, by the way. I hated yeah. the whole BCS system, so the playoffs, I'm a big fan. Okay, so what, the way it works is the top four teams in the nation, as judged by the committee that comes up with the teams that will go to the playoffs, there's four of them. Yep. So, do you want to go first or do you want me to go I'll first? I'll go first. Of your four teams, okay. Let me hear. Okay. First, Alabama. Okay. I've seen them continuing to dominate. Second, Ohio State. Third, Stanford, and four, a lot of people are going with the Clemson, but I'm going with Lamar Jackson and Louisville. Okay. That's a good list. I think I agree with three three of your yeah, teams. I see you've got Clemson. 
I, my, I, my number one seed is Ohio State. Why is that? Are you from Ohio? Go Bucks. Go All Bucks. Right, we'll see. Okay, number two, I've got Clemson. That's where we disagree. Yep. Uh, I've got Alabama at number three, and I've got Stanford at four. Where's your faith in Lamar Jackson? Well, we'll get into that later when we debate Clemson versus Louisville. But here's <laughs> my, my reasoning is Ohio State. I think even if they lose one game, they can win the Big Ten. And if they win the Big Ten, I'm thinking that conference is an automatic bid yeah, into the, into the playoffs. State. Clemson, this is where we're going to have to disagree. I yeah. think Clemson is going to win the ACC, straight, go straight there. Alabama, again, they dominate the SEC. And then Stanford, I think Stanford, this might be their year. But, you know, let's get into the games week five. Week even five Clemson has three it, games. They're not going to beat Alabama or a team like Ohio State. Stanford versus Washington. You want me to go first or you want to go first? You can go first. Okay. On this one. I got Washington winning 38-27. Okay. Jake Browning, so far this year, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions. I think that Washington's defense is going to harass Christian McCaffrey and make their quarterback and other players win the game. And I think <laughs> that's where Washington wins. Now, I did have Stanford going to the college football playoffs. Yep. So I think they'll lose this game, win the Pac-12, and then get into the playoffs. But against Washington... I don't think they're going to win. I have Stanford winning 27 to 24. It'll be a close game. Both teams are kind of evenly matched, but I don't see them being able to slow down McCaffrey. Which, fun fact we learned today, McCaffrey scored his first touchdown on a true visitor's field. All of his touchdowns scored on away games have been at neutral sites. Which so. is a crazy weird fun. stat considering the fact that he's probably like <laughs> one of the best college football players in this era. Um, but well, hold on one second. I'm not done. Oh, Washington sorry. has had a pretty easy schedule for this whole year. Stanford has had one of the toughest schedules and have still done good. Christian McCaffrey will be the difference, and I see him running all over Washington and getting the victory 27 to 24. If he does, then I'll have to admit that your Heisman choice was it's my boy. Was okay. All right. Louisville. This is versus Clemson. This is where we disagree big time. I got Clemson winning 45-31. I got my guy Deshaun Watson. Finally getting into his groove. I've got Clemson's defense harassing Lamar Jackson and making him beat them with his arm, not his legs. And I just got Deshaun Watson proven to the whole entire nation why he is the best quarterback in college football. You know I love Jamar Lamar Jackson. Yeah. I love the guy. But I think Clemson's going to harass him. I think it's going to be a really big no. game, and I don't know if he can handle it. No. Lamar Jackson knows how to score. How many touchdowns does he have this season? I have no idea. He knows how to score. He knows how to get in the end zone. I have Louisville winning 42-35, to 35, all touchdowns coming from Lamar Jackson. No one's been able to slow him down yet this season. They're undefeated, and I'm just trusting what I've seen so far this year. Louisville's going to win. I got Clemson, so that you got, you got Stanford. Yep. I got Washington. You got Louisville, I got Clemson. All right, next Easy. game is another Easy. big game. Now, this is going to be hard for me because I hate both of these teams because both of these teams are in the Big Ten and they challenge Ohio State. Michigan versus Wisconsin. I Go ahead. I got, it. I got Michigan winning 24-10. to 10. It should be a pretty easy win for Michigan. They were, they've been dominant so far this year. The opponents have not run well against Michigan, and that's one of Wisconsin's strictest run game. And that defense that Michigan has, that's going to shut down Wisconsin, and it's only going to allow them to score one touchdown for the entire game. Okay, I will agree with you. Wisconsin does not have a very impressive offense, but let me remind you. Wisconsin has two victories over two teams in the top ten. That's beginning and of the season. And they've only the played of the season. four the top games. ten teams don't mean anything at the beginning of the season. They don't mean anything. Okay, well, here's a different fact. Do you know how gritty Wisconsin defense is? They are going to harass Michigan 17-12. to 12. I've got the Badgers, and <laughs> stick it right to Michigan. God, I can't okay, stand we'll that team. Okay, we'll see it. a few weeks ago when we made our bold predictions in college football, I said Les Miles is going to be fired before the end of the season. And... This week, fired. he was fired. His legacy at LSU will be the second all-time winningest coach. He did win a national championship. But in your yeah. opinion, why did you think that Les Miles got fired? You know, they thought he was going to get fired last year at the end of last season. But when they got that bowl victory, that bowl game victory against Texas A&M, that kind of secured his job for the beginning of this year. But Nick Saban said something I really like. He said, I kind of hated that a man who wins a national championship wins two SEC titles and doesn't make it through the season. I agree with that. That's successful of a coach. He should at least make it through that last season and do it classier than I don't think that was classy at all what LSU did firing him only four games into the season. In a game that was they lost, which was very, you know, controversial, decided up in the box this past week, which in my opinion they should have won. 
but I don't I don't agree with that call. All right, well, Les Miles is gone in LSU, and we'll see how the end of the season goes. We'll take yeah. one more break, but when we come back, we've got NFL and we got a little bit of NBA. Stay with us. Dude, Phil, hard girls in your life these days. It's a struggle, man. It's a struggle. Hey, yeah, dude. How close? How come, though? You're a good looking dude. Just can't find the one. Just can't find her. Yeah, for real. I've been looking at this one lately, but she's just out of my league. <laughs> you know dude, have confidence in me. <laughs> try. Oh, it's 11. That means uh, Red Crate. It's starting. What is Red Crate? So Red Crate, the bookstore, what they do is they do a treasure hunt game and you follow their posts on Facebook and then you see the Red Crate where it's posted and then you try to find it. Like this. Check it out. Oh, good luck finding where that is. No, wait, wait, wait. Check this. So every two minutes or so, they'll post a new picture and it makes it really clear where it is. Oh, that's by the CAC. Yeah, let's go get it. Let's go. I gotta go. No, 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 I gotta go. See, how did you hear about the position? So I saw it online, and I always want to work in a bookstore, so I came for the interview. And can you tell me a little bit about yourself? So my name is Pui Xin Cheng, and I go by. His... Wait. <gasps> I'm sorry, but I gotta go. Where are you going? I thought you wanted to work here. I think my calculus 112 test, please. Yeah. Do you have your cell phone on you? Oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Wait. Did you want to take your test? No, I'll take it later. I know I don't have a whole lot of money, but... Emily, will you marry me? Can you hold this for a second? I don't know about you, but if I'm proposing to a girl, I don't care what's in that crate. I'm not running. Mm. Unless it's like some money, because you know, broke college student over yeah. here. All right. How come she never gives me anything? I don't know, dude, but... <laughs> Can we just move on? Okay, NFL football. We got three new faces at the quarterback position yep. so far this year. Carson Wentz. Trevor Simeon, and Dak Prescott. Who's been most impressive for you so far this year? I say Trevor Simeon. You know, I saw a stat today that really kind of defines Trevor Simeon. More people this past week started Tom Brady over Trevor Simeon in their fantasy league. Is that why you lost fantasy again no, this week? No, no, that's not why. That was a different reason. But more people started Trev er, Tom Brady because they don't know who Trevor Simeon is. You know, he's had mm -hmm. a couple good games those first two games, but they don't believe they can keep it going. But he's shut down those critics. He shut down the haters. You know, he's uh, replacing yeah. Peyton Manning, and yet he's performing, and the Broncos are undefeated so far this year. So he's the most professive. Uh, he's the most impressive performance so far this year. And every single time he gets out of the pocket, he goes with a moose. I don't know if you've noticed that. The moose. The moose. It means the, it's like. You know, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Well, I speak a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Portuguese. Okay, for me, the most impressive quarterback so far this year is rookie quarterback Carson Wentz of the yeah. Philadelphia Eagles. He went to North Dakota State. No one really knew about him. I'm not going to lie. I was a hater. I didn't think that he was going to perform at all. He's 3-0. and He silences haters. And this past Sunday, he beat up on a Pittsburgh Steelers team. Not just like an okay Steelers team. Now, they're, I know you don't like Big Ben. I, I know you hate the Steelers, but... He threw for over 300 yards, and he's playing amazing. Was, it, was that good Eagles or bad Steelers? Uh, that's a good question. I think I bad. I think bad, bad, Steelers, bad Steelers. But you know, hey, when you're a rookie, when you're a rookie, you can take a win. Okay, 
I don't want to talk about a, quarter, a Cowboys quarterback, so you talk about that. I don't want to talk time. about him. I'm a Redskins fan. I can't talk about Cowboys. You got it. All right. He's 2-1, and one, one touchdown, zero interceptions. He's playing all right. That's good. I'm just kidding. He's playing He's <laughs> playing really well for the Cowboys. Let's see if he can continue. I know you don't want to talk about him because nope. you are a Redskins fan. Speaking of the Redskins. Let's My get boy into, Josh let's, Norman. Let's, let's get into a little bit of a debate here. All right, let's do Everyone it. seems to be, be debating this whole little rivalry between Odell Beckham Jr., and Josh Norman. Is it good for the NFL to have these kind of rivalries in your opinion? Oh yeah. It's always fun to have a little rivalry. Josh Norman and Odell Beckham, they go back, to, especially last season, where they actually created a rule where you can't get flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct twice, so you'll get thrown out. They created that rule because of those two. Yeah. And so this past week, Josh Norman, he did his job and got the victory against the Giants and Odell Beckham. You know, I'm not, not a big Josh Norman fan. I have nothing against Odell Beckham, but did you see what happened to him when he punched yeah. the goal? <laughs> he punches a goal post, and the goal post comes back and hits him in the face. Okay, yep. I think rivalries are good in any kind of sport, but this one, it just came, seems to be more drama than, you know, when Brady and Peyton Manning, they had that rivalry? That was entertaining. This one just seems like like a Twitter no, beef No, I'm always going to back up my boy Josh Norman. It's not good. Okay. I know we're only a few weeks into the NFL season. And it doesn't look like there's any team that's running away with the championship so far. Yeah. But if you had to choose two teams to meet in the Super Bowl, what two teams are you picking? You know, like you said, it's really early in the season. But I'm going with the Ravens, Joe Flacco and the Ravens, okay. and the Packers. From what really? I've seen from those teams, I believe that they can. Again, it's early in the season. A lot can change. However, if the Ravens and the Packers continue playing like they are right now, Joe Flacco playing great, probably the best of his career right now, mm -hmm. and then they got an excellent defense. Their Ravens are 3-0, the Packers are 2-1, and one, and they seem like they're finally pulling things together as a team. And I can see them. I would not be surprised if they make it to the Super Bowl. I'll agree with you with the Packers thing, because I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan. I really like him. But as much as I hate saying this, New England is 3-0 oh, without Tom Brady. They started a third-string quarterback who got hurt, by the way. I don't know who the heck is going to play quarterback for the Patriots this upcoming Sunday because both of their quarterbacks are hurt and Brady's yeah. suspended for one more game. But the way that they're playing, they're 3-0 and without Brady. I think Brady comes back and Gronk comes back. He hasn't been playing either. Yeah. I don't see anyone in the AFC right now who can go up against the Patriots. And if it is Patriots-Packers... That'll be the first time Rodgers and Brady go at each other on a big stage. I think that'll be really entertaining. I can't stand the Patriots. All right. So, KG retired. That's my okay, boy. this is just a weird, weird feeling. Yeah. Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Arguably, for our generation, there are Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan. End of an era, 11 championships among these three. This Hall of Fame class is going to be yeah. stacked. What do you think the legacy of these three players is going to be? Well, most of these players started playing before I was even born. I was born in 1996, so you know I've grown up with them. They're the players that I always pick on my PlayStation 2 games to win. Yeah. They're always the all-star, superstar players. So it's going to be kind of weird to adjust to not seeing these players in the league. But the, 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 that's the legacy that they're leaving. There are, like you said, there are MJ, the Michael Jordan that we look for. You know, I wasn't alive, or I was a kid when Michael Jordan was playing. So to see these players leave, you know, I wasn't a personal fan of Kobe or Tim Duncan. Because they destroyed your jazz every single year? No, because <laughs> other reasons. But, okay, yes, that was the reason. <laughs> but KG is is my favorite player of these three. He's one of the best power forwards of all time. And just because he played for Danny Ainge, who is also a personal hero of mine. So KG is going to be a legacy in my book. I guess I'll put Kobe and Duncan in there too. Yeah, for me, if I had to rank them, I'm ranking them Kobe, Duncan, KG. <laughs> I got Kobe okay. just because, like you said, we we didn't catch the whole Jordan thing. Kobe yeah. Bryant was our Michael Jordan. Uh, five championships with the Lakers. I, I remember watching him coming home from school just to watch his games. Tim Duncan, Mr. Fundamental, not the most flashy guy. I mean, you no. could see him shopping for clothes in Old Navy. But again, five championships with the Spurs. Mr. Fundamental, even when he was... 37, he was averaging 20 and 10. And then Kevin Garnett, one of the emotional leaders. I don't think we've seen any player as emotional. Big time trash talker, that's for sure. Yeah. But, you know, these three legends, yep. they're definitely going to be missed. It's going to be weird. Media Day was weird not seeing Kobe with the Lakers. And Anything is possible. That is true. All right. Kevin we keep talking about football. We keep talking about basketball. We have really been slacking on our, our, on our MLB Baseball. talk. <laughs> All right. 
my MLB favorite right now, if I had to choose two teams to go to the World Series, I've got the Washington Nationals, D.C. Okay. guy, and the Cleveland Indians. The reason I don't choose the Cubs is Come because... you got to go with the Cubs. But the Cubs have not won a game since, like... like have they ever won one? They probably won one, but it was like 100 years ago, so I can't go with the Cubs. Hey. I'm going to go with Nationals, Indians. Who you got? I got the Cubs. I got the Cubs going all the way. The way they're playing right now, it doesn't seem like anyone can beat them. They're playing almost like invincible. A lot of my families are Cubs fans. I've always been, I'm not going to tell you my team because you'll just make fun of me, but I agree with the Cubs and I see them taking it. I think our viewers are actually very interested in hearing who your team is. Is it time yet? Cut. Oh, oh shoot. Saved by Dang the bell. It. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in to Buzzer Beater. We go live every single Wednesday at 2.30. For Jake McCleary, I'm Mick Miller, and... Oh, my God. Woo! Make sure you tune in every Wednesday at 2.30. Why are you shooting me? <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Oh.